Hello, welcome to this DCS KA50 Black Shark tutorial. In this video, I will be telling you about how to set up both the special um, in-game cockpit language settings and also your control settings. To begin, we'll go to our options cogwheel. We'll start on the special tab and go to our KA50. In KA50, my preferences are to disable the rudder trimmer and set our trimmer mode to central position trimmer switch. Additionally, we will want the default cockpit if you prefer the native Russian or English if that is your language of choice. Helmet ring displacement, I leave on my default 11. That is the displacement of the helmet targeting um, ring. Um, from your center point of view and for VR players you can say whether you want it to render in your right left or both eyes I have it the default right eye Going over to the Gameplay tab You can make sure the avionics languages are in English if you prefer all the translations um, to be converted as well native if you prefer it in the native translation. Now to begin the controls, I'll pull up these controls indicators. And we're going to start with the stick. My setup consists of a stick, my throttle, and a collective. I put things that I do not use a lot on my throttle. And most of my stuff will be on my stick and my collective, but it is entirely up to you how you bind it. This is just how I do it. So to begin on the stick, we're going to start on the back side. So right here we have um, a little lever. I have on that lever the collective clutch lock slash release button. On this button here on the back, I have hover mode on off. On the triggers, I have gunfire on the second detent. Moving to the front of the stick, this hat switch here. I have in the forward away from me position, the UV 26 start dispensing. And in the aft position towards me, the UV 26 stop dispensing. This is utilized for our countermeasures. In the right position, I have the gun select keybind. In the depress center position, I have the L140 laser warning system reset button. On the top here, I have a button. And on that button, I have release weapons. Moving over, I have a hat switch here. In the forward position of the hat, I have airborne target uh, button select. In the aft position, I have uncage shikval designate target. In the left position, I have button automatic turn on target mode. In the right position, I have button ground moving target mode. In the depress position, I have button head on airborne target aspect. Moving over, I have a small hat switch here. On that hat forward position, I have autopilot altitude hold. In the aft position, I have autopilot heading hold. 
left position, autopilot, bank hold. Right position, autopilot, pitch hold. Depress center position, autopilot, director control. Moving over, I have another hat here. On this hat forward position, I have trim control. On this hat aft, I have trimmer reset. And nothing on the left, right, or center. All of these stick keybinds are extremely important, except for this uh, lever keybind, the collective clutch lock release button. Everything other than that one that I just mentioned, you should have bound. Moving over to my collective. On the left hand side, I have four buttons. On the bottom button here, I have laser standby on off switch. This is a very important button that you want to make sure that you have bound to toggle your laser. On the bottom button here, I have parking brake. Not necessary, um, really, but if you want it, you can have it. Moving to the main control face of the collective, I have a switch here. It is a spring-loaded three position. Push it forward, let go, it returns to center. Back, let go, it'll return to center. On pushing forward, I have readjust free turbine RPM to nominal. And pushing it aft, I have readjust free turbine RPM to low. This is a nice toggle switch to change your RPM uh, powers for your turbines, depending on what you have going on in the aircraft. Moving over. We have a button here behind that switch. On that button, I have external cargo auto unhook. I don't find it used because I don't really sling load anything, but it's there. Moving up, I have a hat switch here. On this hat, in the forward position, I have weapon selection AA mode. In the aft position, Weapon Selection All Stations, Left Weapon Selection Outward Stations, and Right Weapon Selection Inward Stations. I do not have anything on the D-Press. Behind that hat, I have an analog joystick. On that joystick, the click down function, I have Lock Target. Moving over, I have a three position switch behind the um, weapon selector hat. On this three position hat in the forward position, I have the Schickfall narrow view. And in the aft position, Schickfall wide view. I do not have anything on the middle position. Below this, I have a rotary wheel right here. On this wheel, forward, I have TV target frame increase size. And on the aft spin of the wheel, I have TV target frame decrease size. I also have my lock target button bound to this separate button here. All of these are also extremely important for you to have bound for functioning um, use of the aircraft. Finally, I have a switch here. And on that switch, I have engage, disengage root mode in the forward position, nothing in the middle position, and engage descent mode in the aft position. 
I find myself never using this. I just fly it all manually. But you have the option to bind those as well if you choose to use those modes. Moving to the throttle. I have auto start and auto stop on this switch here. I have it with a right control modifier to prevent it from being fired while I'm flying. From here, I have a switch in this position. I have that bound to my landing gear, aft for down, forward for up. Moving over, I have a switch here. I have that bound in the aft position to emergency gear. Can't say that I've ever used it, um, but I have it available to me if I need it. I have a button here, and on that button, I have eject. This is not necessary. Well, all of these on the throttle are not extremely necessary. As I said, these are my less used keybinds. Um, but you can buy a helmet mounted system on and off. This turns your helmet ring on and off. I have that on a rotary knob here in the push down function. I have a three position switch here. On that three position, in the forward position, I have my master arm on off toggle. In the aft position, I have my rearming refueling window. This one, on the other hand, is important. I have a rotary knob here uh, set as buttons. So on the left spin of that knob, I have ABRIS axis decrease. On the right spin, I have ABRIS axis increase. And on the push down, I have ABRIS axis push. This is going to allow us to manipulate our ABRIS display and uh, control all of our settings and whatnot. This is also an extremely helpful keybind to have on this next knob over. It's also set as a button. On the left spin of the button, I have eye teeth two, three contrast up. And on right, I have contrast down. This will allow us to change the contrast of our TV display. Similarly, on this next knob over, also set as buttons, I have my brightness up and down for the same display. Here behind my throttle, I have a button. And on that button, I have get new plane respawn. As always with all my planes, I have on this switch here in the forward position, F1 cockpit view, and in the aft position, theater map view, F10. That lets me get my map and then back into my cockpit without touching anything. And on this final switch over here on the left, I have in the aft position, cannon round selector switch, and in the forward position, cannon rate of fire setting. I do not have anything in the middle position. This will allow me to easily toggle whether I'm using armor piercing or um, high explosive rounds on my cannon and the cannon rate of fire setting um, without having to click inside the cockpit. Moving to the throttle grip, on the little far left hand side I have a switch, three position. In the forward position I have all labels.
this far left button here. I have autopilot emergency off. Just for giggles, on this hat switch here on the right, I have my signal flares keybinds. On this hat switch here, on the up position, I have my communication menu. And that covers all of the keybinds for my throttle. Now let's talk about access commands. So on my collective, this analog joystick, I have my uh, absolute schickful horizontal and vertical slews bound, forward and back for vertical, left and right for horizontal. I have a 40 curve on there to allow me to control it a bit easier. This flight control collective is probably what you're going to have bound. This essentially acts as your um, power, pull it up, helicopter goes up, let it down, helicopter goes down, um, forward back on a throttle if you don't have a collective. On there, as always, no curve. Pitch and roll I have on my stick, forward, back, left, and right. On those, 15 curve, as I have with most of my modules. The throttle keybind is not your actual throttle that you'll be manipulating during flight. That's to bring your turbines and rotors up to power. Um, you can bind this if you have an available absolutely not necessary it's essentially how you get yourself emergency power if you need it i have that on the twist grip of my collective here once again no curve but definitely not needed during the auto start the plane will bring your throttles up and i'll point out during startup where they are if you wish to manipulate them light control yaw which is your pedals I have bound on my pedals. On these, I have a curve of 25 and a dead zone of eight, so I can rest my feet on them and not worry about giving undue inputs. Wheel brake, we only have a single wheel brake key button in here, so I have it on my right foot wheel brake. In my case, I had to invert them. You'll have to test with your hardware. That covers all of the KA50 Black Shark keybinds. I hope it helped. Thanks for watching.